Good evening. My name is Arlene Miller, and it's my privilege to welcome you to this edition of Our Town. My guest this evening is Stephen Crane. Welcome. Welcome, Arlene. Thank you, Arlene. The town, the town manager, and Stephen's been here for more than one year this time. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lots four of, years. Four years. Yeah, Congratulations. Four years. No, thank Congrat you. We're gathered here this evening to discuss the annual town meeting mm -hmm. warrant. That is the the agenda for the annual town meeting. And this year is very special in Longmeadow. First of all, the town meeting is May 9th and 10th. Mm -hmm. And uh, typically, it's a one-night affair. This year, by virtue of the 44 articles that will be uh, on the menu or the warrant mm -hmm. for the town meeting, it's going to be two nights. And we're going to say that over and over again during this interview because we want people to understand it's not a maybe it's two nights mm -hmm. but it's an actual it's an actual two, two nights night. the warrant has a clear line if you get the warrant there's a clear line between which article is the last article on tuesday night and which That's article the is the first article on wednesday night the which tenth. is the 10th right. and so it's 29 is the last article on the first night and if we get to article 29 and it's nine o'clock we're going home for the night and then we start off the next night. And the key thing is get there early both nights to make sure you can register. And you do have to register both nights. Right. They are two independent sessions. Related, but independent. Correct. Yeah. Uh, but distinct things in the warrant. And, you, and, and the moderator uh, is not going to allow articles to be moved from one night to the other. Now, articles may change order in a given night. But what's in the warrant on the first night is on the first night. What's in the war on the second night stays in the second night. Right. So we tell your friends mm -hmm. and your neighbors and the people that are concerned about the issues yep. you're concerned about. Of course, my dream is that everybody comes to both nights because I think it's important business. And, I hope and, so. And I want to say that again. This is a, there's a packet of information that was mm -hmm. given, sent to every home in Longmeadow. And that's uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of work goes into preparation of this mm -hmm. document from the Finance Committee, from Stephen Crane, from all the boards and committees to get this information to the public in a timely manner so we can read over all the machinations about how the budget was formed, what kind of money's coming in, what kind of taxes we're going we're gonna to experience, and what these articles are, including not only what the article is, but an explanation of what that article means, which is always helpful to me. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to try to do this evening is um, give you a synopsis of what, because there's so many articles we can't possibly go through every one in every bit of detail, and I apologize for that because that would be great, but we're not going to be able to do that. Um, but we're going to try to give you the, the, the highlights and, some, and some, uh, some information about, you know, the top echelon mm -hmm. and the most difficult of the articles to understand. And so I'm thrilled that Stephen's taking the time to do this because I always think it's important that you, we come as prepared as we can to the town meeting, mm -hmm. so we all benefit from that. And folks, these, these decisions we make at town meeting will affect our government, our taxes, our town for the next 12 months and beyond. Many of these are long-lasting. The decisions we'll make at this town meeting will have long-lasting effect on our quality, quality of life in Longmeadow. So and, our, and our ability to sustain that quality of life right. from a financial and operational standpoint. Right, so these are important yeah. things. And, you know, it's a big if, deal. If, if a month after that you start to complain about stuff, you know, wake up and remember, if you're not at that town meeting and vote, yeah. this, is, this is our opportunity to give our voice to the, mm -hmm. to the elected officials the, and the hardworking staff in the town. And I think just, and just very briefly, the, the people have asked why two nights. Last year at the annual town meeting, we didn't have nearly as many major significant articles from that were generated by kind of select board actions as we do this year. And we went till quarter of one in the morning and at the end of the night we were passing spending articles three and four at a time without much thought or discussion. And you could probably question whether or not there was even a quorum left when we got to the end of it. And, and, and we looked at that and said that's not really how to, the right way to do it. Now that timing was driven by citizens petitions and we knew that the select board knew it had to make a choice on one night or two before the citizen petition deadline was complete. And if we'd gotten citizens petitions in, there's a chance we don't even get to the town business in that night. Yeah. And so we looked at it and thought, DPW facility, stormwater utility, the diff project, things that are so really like this first year. time this appearances, year. just this, this year. year. Yeah. Things that are just the first time appearing on here, plus the municipal modernization, municipal modernization act. And you're gonna hear law, all about that as we go on. Made a bunch of changes and it, we really said, it's not fair to the community to try and ram this all through in one night. Let's give them the time to learn about it and discuss on town meeting floor. Yeah. So that's why we did two nights. All right. 
Put on your seatbelts. Yep. Launch here, into it. Here yeah. we go. So, you know, maybe we should start. We, we talked about which ones we should hit before mm -hmm. we went on camera. But I, I, let's just start briefly with two, which is the snow removal one, just mm -hmm. so people understand how that works. And this is asking the town to add another 200000 to that budget for this year, mm -hmm. not for last year, but for the, the, the winter we just came through. So... How does that happen? So the, the one uh, line item t municipalities can, can deficit spend under state law is the snow and ice, mostly because they're unpredictability in New England winters. Uh, we are going to amend that on the floor to add, to increase the amount, because when we, you recall that when we were, when this was warm, it was, it was before being March, was before March 15th. It was before March 15th, we had that big storm. Um, and so that was one of the, and we've had some additional costs. There have been some costs related to the, essentially, disintegration of our salt shed. Uh, in terms of evaluating it structurally that are tied to, it is a part of our snow and ice operations, but they were, you know, structural engineers and, and things um, of those types of co soft costs to evaluate our salt shed, which is sure. condemned. Okay, so so that's going to be a 200,000 plus. Correct. Number to add to the budget. Ouch. Yeah. Okay. And then um, just an easy easy read on Article 3, which is to it's a very small mon amount of money, less mm -hmm. than $3,000, but it's for uh, previous year expenditures that we have, have, haven't been paid or, or were not um, submitted on time to be paid before the beginning of the last fiscal year. So that's, that's a four-fifths vote, just mm -hmm. to say it's not a lot of money, not complicated, but it's a four-fifths, which is an unusual mm -hmm. vote for the town meeting. So let's get right into the, um, do you want to do five or should we just skip and get right to six? We can go, I think we go right to six. Okay. And, and, and uh, just as a general statement, some of these items will be, uh, amendments will be offered by select board members on behalf of either the finance director or myself to tweak some of these numbers. Like said, the warrant gets nailed down in March and then we get more information right. or expenditures tracking for the current fiscal year change. Uh, legal services, for example, is, has gone up a little bit since we published the warrant article, so we're gonna make it a tweak that. So just people should be advised that there may be some amendments on the floor minor. To, to tweaks, minor, minor mm -hmm. tweaks to uh, um, reflect those changes. But six, six this year is, six is the budget, the annual budget for next year, which begins mm -hmm. July 1st and goes through <laughs> June 30th. It's uh, 64 million and change. Boy, I can remember when it was in the 30 million, well, a long time ago. Um, and this typically can be very controversial, mm -hmm. but I'm hearing rumor that it's uh, copacetic this year. Uh, it was a very low drama budget. Um, I, I want to commend Superintendent O'Shea and the school committee for being coming to the table very collaboratively. Last year was, it was collaborative last year, but stressful in that the select board agreed with the school committee to give them the ability to implement uh, tuition-free kindergarten. kindergarten. That had a major impact on the rest of the budget. And um, we were able to get through that, although there were some choices that we made that really weren't all that great. It, it, we've gotten past it, it didn't really have any lingering effect. But Superintendent O'Shea came in, said we want to work together. We had some, they had some favorable changes on their expenditure side. Uh, we did as well. And so both sides were able to, um, there were some things we held off on that we really wanted to do last year. And we weren't able to do that. Not broad expanses, expanses of services, but just tweaking certain departments to get more bang for the buck. Sure. And so we were able to do a lot of those. And um, in addition to my sanity, I've lost part of my eyesight no, good. being I, here. I, I, I'm, I'm in the trifle, so yeah, I can keep mine all the time. Over the last four years. <laughs> um, so I, I think, again, a low drama budget. Um, both sides worked very well together. Uh, there was not a lot of um, disagreement at the, between the town manager and select board. In fact, the select board adopted the town manager's budget. Um, without so Congratulations. Th thank you, without yeah. change. Um, that has very little to do with me, to be honest with yeah. you. But uh, and I think the super the uh, school committee adopted the superintendent's budget. So the work we did behind the scenes, um, which included the chair of the school committee and the chair of the select board, as well as myself, the superintendent, and the finance directors of both departments, uh, we really hashed a lot of things out behind the scenes and, and really prevented um, large scale discord. And so I, I, I'm pleased with this year's budget, and I think it's going to set the town up for FY18 for a good year. So it includes full day kindergarten? It includes full day kindergarten. Full, free, of uh, tuition free. It's, that is now a, a matter of, of our ongoing operating operation, costs. Yep. Normal operation. And it, it was increased uh, just generally less than 2.5%? Generally less than 2.5%. Yeah, so yeah. That, so around that, two which and is change. The, which is the, the tax, the, the property tax mm -hmm. rate may not go up more than 2.5%. So that's, that's, that's been met. The budget we presented per the directive was to go to the 2.5%. I mean, costs of most line items go up far more than 2.5%. So we make adjustments, we make tweaks. Uh, usually in, uh, 
benefits and uh, retiree retirement costs, those definitely go up. And but then you have material costs and things like that. And, um, and so we were able to offset those with other changes in attrition and things like that. Um, but in the end, when all of the revenue numbers get plugged in and all of the expenditure numbers get sharpened, we will come in less than two and a half percent. And to me, this is amazing because every year, some years ago, we all said, "Oh, we're going to need an operating uh, override. Over override," and we keep moving. We, we haven't had to do that. No. So, congratulations to you. Thank since you. we've been, since you've been here, we've not had to do that. And since since we built the high school, we've not done that, which is remarkable. So that we've been able to stay with mm -hmm. it, with all the, the constraints and the demands and services and mm -hmm. everything else. We've been able to stay, stay within that, with that in that limit. So that's 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 great. Yeah. The, the next article is real quick. Um, article 7 is mm -hmm. just to set aside some money for uh, collective bargaining. No, collective bargaining is all done. These are non-collective bargaining employees, okay. but we usually carry separate line items for salary increases. Okay. Really just to be transparent to the, fo to the, to the people at home Great. so they know uh, the, the sal collective bargaining agreements that were already adopted are carried in, the, in Article 6 in those line items. Great. These are uh, non-represented employees, like myself, the finance director, things like that. And we just want to show people that you know we want to give people the increases that the unions are getting as well, and this is what the cost is. And like it's just a matter of transparency. And, and we may not end up spending all of that if we have attrition or some other kind of factor. Right. And do we know, by the way, in Article Six, this the state's budget is that included the uh, revenue from the state, or is that just a guesstimate at this point? The state hasn't passed their budget yet. That's so it's just a guesstimate. Th this is the estimate. But yeah. It's a good guesstimate, maybe. Let me just shut that off. Um, great. And then eight is, uh, again, another favorite of mine, and that's the uh, appropriations for capital expenses. Now, our town has been ahead of the curve many, many years on this, setting aside a, a significant amount of money out of our budget every mm -hmm. year to address capital expenditures mm -hmm. to try to keep ahead with the of the needs. We, it's impossible. It, it's, it's, it's impossible. It, we, we end up leaving more stuff off the table that ends up in but front of people But nonetheless, yeah. this is far better than we were 20 years ago. Yes, we, we have made some significant upgrades, and the one thing, there will be an amendment on this one that is somewhat, it's a simple concept. If you have them listed separately, the state requires you to bid them separately. If we're doing three boilers, we want to bid them together and get the economy of scale. Yes. So we're going to amend this article so that's one line item with one amount of money. It's a big, big year for boilers. It is. And a big year for fire suppression. <laughs> The town goes, has gone through phases where they've done a lot of work in a little bit of time. If you look at the history of the town, and it's well before my time, you know way more about it than I do, yeah. but as you know, you go the increments of spending and then not. Well, we've been doing but when, when you go spend, through yeah. those things, where, like fire trucks are a yeah. good example. If you buy two fire trucks two years apart, 25 years from then, you're going to need to buy two fire trucks two years apart, right. and we're hitting that cycle in a lot of ways. And the boilers. I'm a little well, surprised the, by the Glenbrook. But, but the boilers are also, the, the brand of boiler is really if you if you google More burn efficient. and boilers if you google burn and boilers they from this generation massive rates of failure so it's kind of a bad product to begin with and that's what we drive that's that. too bad that's yeah. a lot of money yeah that's good okay so that's those and that requires mm. two-thirds because it's a it's an enterprise fund that we're taking the money out of mm. and so that's a two-thirds vote but these are there's a lot of hard work and deliberation goes into these. A lot, a lot of time to make these decisions, mm -hmm. and hopefully, I appreciate you noting that not many people know how much time the DPW puts into getting these things together. Well, not just DPW. This is all. I mean, but DPW just facilities. That's what you, why you're well, talking no, about. Well, no, I mean, the, the cost estimating, the engineering, all that stuff. It's a lot of work, and the capital planning committee puts in an exceptional amount of time reviewing these as right. citizen volunteers. Okay, now 9 and 10 are kind of a package. 9 and 10 is something mm -hmm. we've been hearing about for several years in this community, and that's the conversation about the DPW facility, the, mm -hmm. the Department of Public Works mm -hmm. facility, which cur currently is at 31 Pondside Road in the 100-year floodplain in the Meadows. Mm -hmm. So 9 and 10 are asking the town I'm going to just summarize it and you can go into the detail to, to take some land by eminent domain so that we can site a new facility on a piece of land that is uh, not intrus intrusive to any neighborhood in the town of Longmeadow. Mm -hmm. And 10 is asking to the community to appropriate money to fund the taking and build the facility. Via a debt exclusion vote, vote. in June. Right. And so in when June. Nick, when you explain both. Sure. How so, that works. So the Article 9 is the authorization for the select board to, to do the eminent domain taking. 
uh, and that would be contingent upon getting the funding at the, the at the election in June, which then of course is contingent upon approval of Article 10, which is the funding article right. for the project. So maybe back up a second to how we do debt, debt mm -hmm. exclusion in case there are people that don't understand so the, the override process. Right. This is an override, but it's a debt exclusion override. Yeah. Yes. So two thirds vote town meeting appro approves the authorization of the funding. It then go and it actually is going to be on the ballot because we had to set the ballot before town mm -hmm. meeting. So it's going to be on the ballot to vote. So town, town meeting voters are going to vote whether or not it should be authorized, and then it's going to go to all town voters at the at a ballot at a at ballot the, question at the ele right, already scheduled annual town election in June. June right. And then if enough voters, a majority of voters approve the question. Majority of voters who vote, yes. that would be. Yeah. Approve the question, <laughs> then we will have the authorization to do it. And then when the time is right, when we get ready to go to bid, the select board can then do the borrowing, just like it was at the high school. It's, if you're, for people who remember the high school part, I wasn't here, but it's the exact same process. Right. We haven't had an override since the high school, so may, may, maybe many new residents mm -hmm. don't really know the process we have to go through. But everybody... I hope has heard something about the new the DPW the proposed mm -hmm. project and in fact I know Lomano Cable TV is running a bunch of information about it there are going to be uh, it's going to be an open house mm -hmm. I believe at the DPW facility next Sunday the 5th oh, sorry so Sunday the 7th from 12 to 2 if you're not familiar with the project please come down and check it out yeah. I actually just spoke with a gentleman on the phone today who did not know very much about the project and he asked the same questions that we've heard in virtually every discussion on this why can't you keep it where it is and the short answer is um, you can't really get it permitted. You can't insure it. And it would because end up, it's in the 100-year floodplain. Because flood. it's in the 100-year floodplain and, and on a burn ash dump. And um, you would end up spending a lot more to get a lot less than what we're proposing. And so that's the big reason. And then the other thing is why does it cost so much? And the building we're proposing is and Arlene was served on the DPW committee, which is a group of resident volunteers and town meeting voters, just like everybody else, who went, gave up their summer last year to really evaluate this for... Two years this has been going on. Yeah, for at least two years, but, but the really intense effort of the DPW committee last, last throughout most of the last summer really did, you did all your friends and neighbors a, a big service by um, going through dozens of sites and drilling it down to what the preferred site was. And the community, at town meetings during that process made it clear they didn't want to give up open space that is town owned which drove us to a privately held site and everyone kind of, is kind of consensed around this, around the Grand Meadows Tennis Club on Dwight Road as the preferred site and so this isn't a town manager or select board or even DPW committee choice this is clearly the choice of the community which is why we are bringing the eminent domain vote um, forward and then why does it cost so much the building we're proposing is the minimum we need to serve to, to serve the needs of the community to meet those community needs today. You mean the one built in 1930 doesn't work? No, but <laughs> that's you, that's when the current DPW building was built, 1930. And, and, and so, why does it cost so much? Our engineer for this job does dozens of these, and they have bid data on projects exactly like this in Massachusetts from within a month, and so. The, they know exactly how much these buildings cost to build. What the what the bids are likely going to be. What the bids are likely going to be. Now, we think this is going to be the ceiling. We're put, taking a conservative approach, and like the high school, there was an authorization for up to seventy eight million. It came in under seventy six million. So we're hoping we will come in under this amount based on the bidding climate. But if you look at the plan that's being proposed, hopefully you'll note that there's not a space. To, serve, to store some kind of piece of equipment that we don't own yet. And there's not an office space being built for some person we may hire in the future. Virtually every square foot of this building is going to be occupied on the day we move in. And I, and I, I just want people to know we, we went with the smallest possible thing we could do to still meet the needs of the community and, and really present that value that they're not wasting their money on something that is undersized and not going to meet their needs. Right, and we should recommend, this is a, this is a butler building. This is a prefab yeah. building. This is not, not the Taj Mahal. No. This is a very simple, and much of it is storage space because so that all of the vehicles that you and I as taxpayers buy with our taxes, allow mm -hmm. the town to buy, are in fact inside, mm -hmm. not outside in the weather, which diminishes their life and this, mm -hmm. this, this keeps them safe and, and inside the building. And then in addition, some of the amenities that are inside the new facility, which I'm going to just say, um, the, the area where our workers, our DPW employees are asked to convene in the morning, 
um, take a break for lunch and use uh, facilities, to, uh, toilet facilities, is gross. I mean, it's, there's no better word to say. It's just so outdated. It's separated by one door from the from the maintenance bay. Well, and exhaust and dirt and everything is, else. If anybody that goes down there and doesn't feel that it's totally uh, embarrassing that we're treating our employees that way, I, I think would, I think you mm. would agree with me if you go down and see it. And I would encourage you to do that mm. on, on May sixth, but seventh. Sixth, seventh. Sunday. Sunday the, the seventh. Sunday the seventh. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so just to say that, and there's a lot of information that you can glean if you don't already have it, either on the website mm -hmm. or from people from the, the DPW Task Force Committee uh, or on Long Meadow Cable TV about this. Yeah. And we would encourage you to ask questions. I mean, one of the questions people are asking me is, is this going to be a friendly taking or a controversial taking of the land? Do you want to speak to that? Or? Well, sure. And there's been a lot of questions about eminent domain. And I, I, in this communities I've worked before now, we, eminent domain was was more frequent, so people understood it. Basically, the, uh, the taking is, because this is a public use, if we are if town meeting gives us the authorization and then gives us and then the voters give us the funding, we will record the t order of taking at the registry of deeds on a certain day. And we will um, pay the owner of the property what we have, have determined to be the fair market value which based is on what two. The, what the law which says. Which what the law says. When we did two, we hired two completely independent professional appraisers uh, to go do their thing and just tell us what is this worth. And they take different approaches and they look at different ways. Like if you were getting a loan for your house and, a, and an appraiser showed up, and they make subjective adjustments to the value. Um, so we didn't just look at our assessed value and say, "Yeah, we'll just use that number." We wanted to have it. We wanted to have an appraisal as if we were going to purchase it. Which is what you, what you have to do. Which is what you must do by law. It, we you only you only have to do one. We did two just to make sure. Yeah. And so the owner will get a pro tanto payment, the check for the for the fair market value. We will record the order of taking, and as that, as of that moment, the town will own the property. Right. And we will always own the property. Um, the, the owner retains the right to take the town to court and litigate the fair market value as of the day of that taking. And that's something that is, is not all that uncommon, which is why we've worked really hard to prepare ourselves at, on the front end. So you're not going to answer my question. What's that? Do you think it's friendly? <laughs> it's, it's really, you'd have to ask uh, the owner. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you're not the owner. I've just been given the high sign we've mm. got to move along. But so, d mm. just to say, be prepared that Article 9 and, I, 9 and Article 10. Uh, or the DPW facility. Let's go to the DIF, mm -hmm. uh, Article 12, 13, 14. 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. We're calling it a DIF, which means? District Improvement Financing. Okay. And this is, there are three articles, uh, and I'll, but I'll address them as a whole. Article 9, essentially, Article 9 sets the map, the DIF Not districts. Nine. I'm sorry, that's the DW. Oh, that 12. Article 12 sets the district. Basically, the, the, the article draws the map around the parcels that are going to be a part of this district. Okay, so get your minds, in order to hear his conversation, get mm -hmm. your minds onto Dwight Road, sort of across from Kindercare. Across from Kindercare. Between the nursing home and... There's a bunch of woods there now. Yeah. And so get your mind to the fact that a good chunk of that woods is in Longmeadow, not East Longmeadow, yeah. which is what I thought the first time right. this was brought to me. So that's the area he, we're talking yeah. about. There's, there's, a, there's a nursing home back in behind there, which actually yeah. will be integrated in this district. So it's sort of between, if Congress were to go straight mm. and uh, go toward, uh, go south to Williams, it's that section on the East Longmeadow side of right. that street. So uh, there's going to be a medical office building. A medical office building is, is proposed for that long metal parcel. About 50,000 square feet. It's Bay State Health. Uh, and and um, there's also a, there's the potential for another 25 or so thousand square foot building because there's enough room on the parcel. But that is currently, uh, they're not, that's not a part of the current, uh, it's a part of the current site plan review, but they're not committed to building that just yet. Uh, and then on the other on the East Longmeadow side of the line, Berkshire Health, which is the nursing home, is going to do a major expansion project as well. And when we met with the developer, so it's two towns and a developer. Two towns and a developer, public-private partnership. And typically, when a developer comes in with something this big, we ask for mitigation to handle traffic. And the driveway is going to be across from Converse Street, which does not have a signal, and it is a high crash intersection for us. It's a bad intersection. In fact, that whole corridor is bad. And immediately after looking at it, we thought. If we address Converse Street and don't deal with Dwight and Williams and Ben and Chestnut, you really haven't fixed anything. And so we looked at how can we do the whole corridor uh, as one when the developer can't, the development wouldn't carry all of that cost. It's not a big enough development, and so it would never get done. And the town doesn't have, the, it's not high enough, on the, even though it's bad, it's still not high enough yeah, on the priority list where we can marshal the resources. We looked at this program called the DIF, and it allows the 
tax revenue generated from the medical office building, because right now it's, it's assessed very low because it's vacant land. Once this is built, it's going to be assessed very high because it's a professional office building. That increase in property taxation plus a contribution from East Lawn Meadow for the, for the improvements on Benton and Chestnut okay. will, will, well, well, that's will their, 100% that's fund a complete redo of that entire corridor, all three of those intersections. Dwight Road will look, it's been widened recently because of a drainage project, but it's gonna be widened a little more. You'll have bike lanes, sidewalks, better turning lanes, better signalization, and the signals will talk to each other. Uh, and so it's a, a major corridor flow uh, improvement. And the cost of it won't displace any current expenditure. So right. it's, it's not free, no. but your taxes aren't going to go up as a direct result of the project. Right. And, and then once the project is paid off, that will be tax relief. Right. And if that 25,000 square foot medical other building, the, the bonus building as I call it, if that gets built, that's 100% general fund for yeah. the town. And, and depending on how much the final project is, mm -hmm. it may be less, there still may be, may be excess tax money. Correct. Yes. And we, we, again, we took a conservative approach Which to financing. Which I imagine you did. Yeah. So this is going to be... Um, this is a game changer it, 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 it for It sounds town. complicated, mm -hmm. but it's really a win-win-win-win-win kind of a project it for really Longmeadow and East Longmeadow. So. And, and, and the developer. And, and, the and, and not only the developer, I mean, we want people to make money if they're going to make their investments in the community. But it's going to be a benefit for the people who currently have to drive to the north end of Springfield to get... I to think go we to should put up a toll, make it a toll road. I think I've already. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's a benefit for, for everybody. It really is. Okay. So uh, that so that brings us to that was twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Mm -hmm. And what was I going to say about 17? Well, there's a few of these uh, articles that are kind of technical in nature. These are bylaw things? Yeah. Oh, this and is 15, 16. 16 cents complicated. Not all, of, yeah, not all of them are related to the um, Municipal Modernization Act, but that act did make some changes. Are any of these? Uh, the revolving funds. Oh, the, um, no, 15 is. 15, 15 and 16. Municipal, yeah. And, and then there was a change, and then 17. Okay, so, so anytime we see the words uh, Governor's Municipal Moderniz Modernization Act in the explanation. Yes, these are technical corrections that are, uh, the, the law passed last fall. And that law says we have to? Well, it says to, to be able to continue to do what you already said you were doing, you have to tweak it. Tweak the language. Tweak the language to reflect the new law. Okay, okay, so that's good. So then that, I'm going to skip right to Article 18. Mm -hmm. Which is the beginning? Um, oh, no, that's, that's the operational. 18 is operational stabilization fund. Right. And how is that going? That that's good. It, it's going pretty well. We we put in what we can put in in a given year. Well. And what's in there? Uh, it's over two million dollars. Yeah. We we're trying to get to 10 percent reserves. I think we're at six percent. Um, and, and so uh, you know basically when that number that's in 18 is what's left over after we've spent all the money in these other articles. Right, but and and you have a reserve. Correct. Yeah, so you're not you're not depleting everything. But this is just a rainy day, rainy, rainy day fund. Yeah, we're not spending any money out of the operational stabilization. Yeah. We're putting money in. Which is a good thing. We haven't used that money to balance our budget. That's a good sign. Not since I got here. Right, that's yeah. a good sign. So 19 through 29, mm -hmm. the last 10 articles, or 11 articles, 10 articles, have to do with community preservation um, articles. Mm -hmm. And so just to reiterate, this is a, a, a pot of money that uh, where the town contributes, each resident contributes some money on the tax when it pays its taxes. And then we have some money coming from the state to match mm -hmm. to some percentage of what we contribute. And then we can use this money for just four things in the town. One is historic preservation, one is housing, one is recreation. Oh, it's open space. And open, sp open space and recreation. The and then the yeah. other is undesignated. Yeah, and the other one can be a little more flexible. Yes. So this, these articles, um, there's a separate committee that, that reviews these, the Community Preservation, Community Preservation Committee, and they make recommendations to the town. This has nothing much to do with the selectmen, although they usually give their blessing. They pass the articles through the, on the warrant. On the warrant. And, or the Finance Committee, although the Finance Committee does weigh in, apparently, on the warrant um, for these articles. So I don't think these are complicated. These have had a public hearing. They've been, they're, they're ones, they're, they're projects that benefit um, recreation, again, open space, um, historic buildings like the, the store's library is in here. Um, a lot of recreation articles are in here for fields, maintenance, and irrigation projects, mm -hmm. and playgrounds. So that's the kind of the flavor of these articles. Anything, any highlight that you want to point out? Yeah, actually, if you, just for a minute. Sure. The, the store's library is, is a window replacement. 
Uh, and that, the Historic District Commission, uh, which reviews projects within the Historic District, has some input in terms of what type of window you can replace the windows with. In the district. In the district. And so, and so because there is a historic preservation approval component to this, it is a historic preservation component. I mean, I think on its face, it may not look like window replacement should be historic preservation, but you have to replace with historic type windows. Well, it's also, if you don't replace the windows and water gets in, the building yeah. is not going to be in very yeah. good shape. And that so is what's happening. We, and then, do, we do see it as preservation. And the other one I just want to highlight is uh, Wolf Swamp Field. Um, is there's a, uh, a sum of money in there for a well installation, um, but it's contingent upon the development of a master plan for Wolf Swamp Fields. One of the things we went through the DPW process when we discovered Wolf Swamp Fields Article 97, and when we realized that that was going to be very difficult to use for any other purpose but recreation. And it's used a lot for and recreation. And it's used a lot for recreation. Yes. Uh, we decided let's just get on with it then and develop a master plan to really improve the parking and access and irrigation and everything else. And so this is really step one in that. And we'll be able to site the well, we'll develop a master plan, and we'll be able to kind of build a future for Wolf Swamp Fields where maybe every year we'll go back for a, a slice of money to do an improvement, you know, one year to the next. So well, depending on the, on the other projects that are asked for. Correct. And again, these, uh, these are based on estimates done months way far before the project is done. They're conservative by and large. Uh, cost mm -hmm. estimates, any money that's not spent in any one of these projects goes back to the Community Preservation yeah. Fund, so it's not just it, given to anybody where it's mm -hmm. in, a, in some other kind of silo. So that brings us to, that's the end of Article 29, and by the way, that's the end of night one, mm -hmm. that would be May 9th of this year's annual town meeting. We will, we will recess from that town meeting have any kind of conversations people want to have about it, those first 29 articles, and then we will reconvene uh, at 7 o'clock the following day, Wednesday the, the 10th. The 10th, same location, the high school gymnasium, to do articles 30 through 34. So for this conversation... 44. 44, you're correct. 30 through 44, thank you. Mm -hmm. Go a little slip of the... I mean, I may leave after Article 34, but... <laughs> no, no. So, so uh, just to make that clear again, so it's May, the annual town meeting this mm -hmm. year is two nights, May 9th and May 10th. It's mm -hmm. not maybe two nights. It's not going to be, possibly we can get out early. If it goes late, we'll go, it's, it's, it's not that two way. nights. This is the first time ever since I've lived here in 78 or 79 that we are really doing a two-night town meeting in Longmeadow. We are going to adjourn after Article 29 on Tuesday the 9th. Right, and no begging, crying, acting in the hallway is going to change the decision of the moderator to mm -hmm. do that. So come prepared to discuss Articles 1 through 29 mm -hmm. on May 9th at 7 o'clock at Longmeadow High School. Um, we are going to do a taping of the second night uh, so that you can watch it another time if you like. But uh, mm -hmm. for this evening, thank you very much for your insight. Yeah. It, it's a... It, it's a, it's a big night. Both nights are big nights, and it, as Very you important. noted, it's, it's, uh, this is a big deal for the community, and I hope people will uh, attend and have their voices heard. Great. And if you have questions in advance, I'm certain the Selectman's Office or department heads or other people on committees would be very happy mm -hmm. to, to help you with those. So uh, thank you, Stephen Crane, for being my guest. And thank you to uh, the audience for listening. And we hope to see you at the town meeting on May 9th and May 10th. Good evening. <laughs>